Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, <laughs> I hope the audio is good, uh, because I haven't really futzed with my microphone stuff in a little while. So, uh, uh, for all I know, <laughs> Windows and OBS could have changed all that shit, and I don't know. I see that I've only dropped, uh, 61 frames, so probably my internet is cooperating. I, it would really suck if my internet, like, freaks out right now, but, uh, you know, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, audio sounds great, that's good. <coughs> um, good news or bad news or no news? Uh, no news, I guess? I mean, everything's as up-to-date as it was in my last tweets and, uh, community post. I was seeing some people when I first hit the go live button saying, like, Oh, shit. No, I don't remember word for word what they said now. <laughs> uh, they're acting like I hadn't I hadn't made a post or a tweet in a long time. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, because I tweet like a million times a day. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was hanging out with um with a friend the other day, just like, you know, in a call. Like a good discord call. And it was the first discord call I've done in three months I think three months so oh thank you for the bits um I don't actually have my headset on I kind of heard that from uh, across the table there um right what was I saying yeah I hadn't done a call in a few months um and it's only quite recent that I've been able to like sit up in the chair for an extended period of time and not have my heart totally freak out um I know that some people like haven't kept up super on the um on the community posts and the Twitter and everything because there's so many posts and they're long and whatever. People miss stuff. You know, everyone's got their own life. Um where we're at right now in the whole medical stuff is I've I've already seen two specialists now, as well as like obviously seeing my uh my doctor quite a few times now, like my family doctor. Um, I've seen a cardiologist, which is a heart specialist, um, because they wanted to rule out it being a heart problem. They thought it probably wasn't because when I initially went to the hospital, when I collapsed a few months ago, uh, they checked out my heart a whole bunch there because they were worried about a heart attack or some kind of heart problem. And they said my heart was fine after like an ECG and an ultrasound, um, and... What was it? A couple blood tests. They wanted to do blood tests for, um, I think it was blood clots to make sure I don't have that. And cholesterol. Uh, cholesterol's fine. Heart looks healthy. Uh, nothing weird on the ultrasounds. I've done two ultrasounds for it now. I did ECGs. I did the ECG while you're on an exercise bike thing at a cardiology clinic. I did, uh, there was another one. I did the Holter monitor where you have a heart monitor on for like two days. And then I followed up with a cardiologist about that. Um, heart's good. Everything with my heart seems perfectly healthy. I also saw an endocrinologist, which is like a nerve and, and not nerve. It's, um, uh, like thyroid and adrenal gland specialist. I think there's a better word for that, but. Uh, they do like thyroid, they they do um, hormones. It's like hormones and thyroid and stuff. Um, because my family doctor thought this was a, a hormone problem because like headaches and nerves going down the arm and whatever. If your hormones are messed up, it can mess up tons of things in your body. Um, but after I saw the specialist, she's like, you don't really have any signs of anything in particular. Your numbers are okay for like, she had me do a whole bunch of last minute tests right before I went in and she said that those looked pretty good, but both, both specialists, the cardiologist and the endocrinologist both thought the problem is my neck. Uh, because one, I, I sit down a lot, you know, cause I sit down for a living basically. And even with all my stretching and all my walking and everything I do, um, I have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So the connective tissue between my joints isn't very good. I'm prone to having um, joints slip out of place and stuff like that in general. So even if I'm taking pretty good care of my body, sometimes something can just move wrong and mess up. 
And they were both thinking, um, this thing I've had in my neck for a good few years now, like as long as I can remember, um, I haven't been able to tilt my head to the left as far as I can tilt it to the right, uh, by quite a bit actually. And I, I, I realized that when I stretch it a bit too much, the nerves in my left hand and left arm and everything would act up really bad. And so both of them told me that they're pretty sure that I have something wrong in my neck, uh, like a herniated disc or a pinched nerve, or there was like a more proper name for it. Um, I tweeted it out like a week or two ago, what the proper, proper name for it was, which is what the cardiologist told me. Um, cervical something. I, I don't know. It's like a pinched nerve uh, coming between the spine and the and the shoulders and stuff. And that explains why I was having firing nerves and tingling down my arm and into my fingers and hand and stuff. Um, so they both told me to go to my family doctor and ask for a nerve conduction test and uh, basically just tell her that they think it's my neck. So I saw her, told her, you know, they think it's my neck. Uh, so she set me up with a nerve conduction test, which is where they put shocks through your fingers to see what nerves are firing and what ones aren't. And um, uh, what was it? And, and they want an MRI on my neck just to take a proper look at it to see if there's anything really obviously physically wrong with it. However, I was told that they would take months. Uh, she said that both of them will take months, but that if she gets, she might be able to get me in to see an MRI person, I don't know, a clinic where they can do an MRI in over a city over, and I might get that done in a month. Um, I've already been waiting three months, and I've done very, very little work during that time because I'm not really capable of much. Um, so I basically just decided, fuck it, this healthcare system is a piece of garbage. They've prescribed me nothing and taken care of me in no way. They've had me do a million tests that each time I get a test scheduled, it's like weeks away. The amount of incompetence I've had to deal with over the course of this whole thing is well documented now on my com YouTube community page, where just constantly something will go wrong. Like, you guys have been reading all of it, right? Uh, are you doing the MRI at THP? I don't even know where it, my MRI is being done. Uh, they haven't called me yet. And that's the funny thing is like, there's been multiple times now where a specialist is supposed to contact me and I was not given uh, the information for the specialist at all. And my file got f got forwarded to them. So after weeks, I just ended up having to call my doctor's office, ask them for the place it got sent to, because I was never informed. I call them and find that they had my file the whole time and they just never called me. Which, woo, great, thank you. It's not like I can't work or anything. The funny thing is, too, every single one of my appointments that I've gotten, there's a rush order on it. Um, there's a rush order on all of my appointments because my doctor is taking this really seriously. She knows that I haven't been able to work. Um, but the rest of the healthcare system doesn't seem to take it particularly seriously. That's the problem. Um, so yeah, it's been awful. Uh, so, so what I've done is now that we're like 99% sure of what the exact issue is, which is some kind of pinched nerve and herniated disc in my neck. And I can probably pinpoint exactly which one it is because I've had issues with it for a long time. Uh, I literally just started doing all the research I could on like spine health websites and stuff. I found out how you can diagnose which vertebrae it is. I figured out, uh, so I figured out what vertebrae it is um, and what exercises you can do for it. And then I looked up a whole bunch of physiotherapists to see what things you do for it because uh, the treatment plans for these kinds of problem uh, long term, which is uh, 28 to 38 weeks. Uh, there's like surgery, there's drugs, there's physiotherapy, there's manual therapy, which is where someone's actually putting their hands on you and, and trying to manipulate the, the joints and the muscles and, and what have you uh, manually. All of these things. Um, and it turns out that the thing that actually fixes it the best over the course of about six months is physio. 
is just at home physiotherapy. Uh, you need to know what you're doing, obviously, and you need to take it easy and careful and you need to really not rush into it. Um, you can get surgery on it, but surgery is mostly for people in their 50s and older. And even if you get the surgery, six months down the line, people who did the physio are in better shape at the end than the people who just did did uh, surgery. The people who did surgery will get better, but not as well as just doing the physio. Um, which is why the, the surgery is mostly for older people. Uh, is the condition cervical... So, oh, Jesus, how do I pronounce that? Uh, spondylosis. I don't think that's what the, um, what the cardiologist said, um, but it could be. I don't know. I, I gotta look and I gotta, um, look at the exact name again. Regardless. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> Sorry, I'm not reading the chat a whole lot right now. I just want to, like, give the whole spiel first so that everybody is up to date. Um, right. So I just looked up, uh, once I found that physio is like the thing to do. And my, my family doctor told me, um, that because I'm getting better, like some of the symptoms I had in the beginning, like the swollen throat and all of that, that's gone away. That took so long. Like I, I had a swollen throat off and on and like other symptoms for about three months since before my collapse, since well before my collapse. It turns out that that was likely some kind of infection or inflammation. Uh, we don't know what caused that because I was not treated for so incredibly long during this whole thing that it went away. <laughs> so uh, that's a mystery. We don't know what caused that. I probably had a throat infection and no one tested me for it, even though I kept telling everyone who would listen, hey, check my throat, it keeps swelling. That's why they were checking my thyroid, actually, because they thought, hey, you're getting these nerve pains and your throat is swelling. It's probably your thyroid. Turns out it wasn't my thyroid. Um, so we don't know what was swelling my throat. They just took so long that they that that thing cleared up on its own. But, you know, the nerve pains never ended and a lot of these other symptoms never ended. Uh, and that turns out to be my neck. So I've been doing physio the last uh, week now. I've been doing pretty hardcore physio. I just looked up how you do all these exercises properly. I looked up what exercises I should be doing. And I ran it past a couple of physiotherapists who are in the community just to say like, hey, is does this workout routine look appropriate? Is there anything I should add or subtract or move? And uh, after getting their feedback, yeah, I'm just doing at home physiotherapy. Um, I'm still pretty rough some days, especially like um, today I was like great in the morning. And then my back started getting really sore because I did a lot of back workout stuff yesterday. And obviously being bedridden for like two months means that a lot of my back muscles atrophied. So they're not as strong as they used to be when I was lifting weights all the time. So um, when my back isn't, isn't able to support me as well, like right now when it's quite sore, my heart rate goes up a lot because my nerves start getting compressed and everything. Sucks. Um, but I got a new chair, which supports my back a lot better. So I'm doing okay ish right now. Um, I don't know if I'm good enough to go like, pe uh, playing anything right now. So I thought I would just do kind of a casual talking stream like this. I've already started on the next challenge, which those of you on Twitter already know that, which is Pokemon Platinum with one Chansey, which is insanely difficult so far, but the battles are actually really interesting. So I've got no complaints about that. It'll be coming back with a bang. Um, I don't know when that's going to be done because I really, um, you know, I, I, who knows the status of my health, really. I have good days and I have bad days. And sometimes a good day becomes a bad day and a bad day becomes a good day. And it's kind of random. Like at, at any point during this stream, I might have to just go lay down. Uh, I actually made a screen for that. Oh, sorry. It still says I'll be there soon. My bad. I meant to change that to uh, this. I actually have this screen made up. BRB laying down in case I need to go take a lay down break. Um, can you spoil us on Chansey's nickname? Yes, it's, it's Drew. I was going to have Ch uh, Chansey Drew because that's hilarious. Uh, but it was like a couple letters too long. Good to hear your voice. Thank you. This is the first time I've talked into a microphone for an audience in 
months since my collapse. No, since slightly after my collapse, because my last voiceover I did for that, um, the voiceover I did for the, uh, the Corsola run, uh, that one I recorded, um, God, like five days or something after my collapse, but I was like really on the decline. Like at the end of that run, you hear me talk about like, oh, my heart rate's really high. I should go lay down. Uh, that was right before I became really bedridden. I, I was on the decline pretty hard at that point. Um, so that sucked. I'm getting better now. Uh, just through at home physio, because no fucking medical system. No one's prescribed me anything which is insane to me that I haven't even been prescribed like beta blockers for my insane heart rate or anything like that. Um, but my, my doctor is, uh, big into not prescribing anything unless you have to basically. That's just how she is. I'm fine with that. I, I guess I'd prefer that to like a total pill pusher, but it's a shitty situation. I'll see you, Danny. Thanks for coming by and saying hi. I appreciate it. And hi, Lydia and Fury and everybody. Sorry, I, it's hard to keep up with the chat right now. I, you know, I, I'm still, uh, Jesus, so many gifts. Sorry, I should get through. I, I should, um, I should shout out all the people who are giving me all these gifts. I keep seeing them and I see the, uh, the bits, but I don't want to lose my, my train of thought. Jesus, that's a lot of gifts. I don't want to lose my train of thought on letting you guys know how I'm doing because everyone's always asking every day, you know? Just <laughs> watching the World Cup while avoiding work. I heard the, the Qatar team lost. Did I hear that right? I don't really know much about FIFA, so I don't know if this is like single loss elimination or anything. Uh, but I heard that they lost first round, um, which absolutely tickles me pink because uh, fuck that slave state. Also, this coffee is delicious. I missed coffee so much, but I wasn't allowed to have uh, caffeine for quite a long time. One, because the erratic heart rate. And two, uh, because, uh, what was it? One, the erratic heart rate. And two, they weren't sure if there was something wrong with my nerve system or not. So they didn't want me having any caffeine. That said, I'm actually having a decaf right now because we've got a really nice decaf brand. And yeah, I, I kind of prefer not not drinking caffeinated coffee when i haven't eaten a ton oh yeah i i did see that you're you are gamer kenny i'll probably have a hard time remembering that sometimes to be honest but i'll try my best to remember that that's you um but i did see that also is there an fk in the coffee no but there is cream in it so there could potentially be a uh uh a cream in my coffee cream in my coffee fk in my coffee fuck me Are you still managing 10k steps a day? I was for like seven days and then I needed to take a break because my body was pretty sore. I haven't been able to get close to, um, I haven't been able to get close to 10k again because, uh, I'm doing this physio and it's quite hard on the back, but I'm going to get back to that soon. De de decaffeinated does not mean caffeine free. Of course. Yeah. It does have a very, very small amount. It's, um, it's not chemically treated. Uh, because that has been made illegal here. <laughs> I'd say fuck Qatar too, but having lived there for four years, I don't think I should give it a, a harsh remark like that. I'm sure there's nice parts of Qatar. I'm sure they didn't keep you near the slave parts of Qatar. Just drink, uh, MDB, just drink it raw, no sugar, no sweeteners. I don't use sugar or sweeteners in my coffee. I'm just not really the biggest fan of that. Um, but I do have cream in it. Uh, I quite like cream in my coffee. Not always. I went with black coffee for a long time, but we've got pretty good cream now and we've just got coffees that really uh, benefit from having something like cream in it. So I quite enjoy that. As far as I was concerned, uh, Doha was the only location in Qatar and there was no slavery there. I hope not. <laughs> See, with, with Qatar, it's not like, um, it's not like public slavery kind of thing. Like, like walking around with a fucking dude on a chain. It's more so like they will have building contracts for major, major construction efforts in which 
they are in paid housing and they are not allowed to leave until the contract is over and they take their passports and shit. Which is super, super illegal in like most countries, but you know. What is Canada like in general? See, that's a hard question to answer. Because like every other country, you know, it depends on your upbringing. It depends on where you live in the country. It depends on like socioeconomic status. It depends on so much. You know, like where I live in Canada has tons and tons of tons of immigration from all different places. So it's like a real cultural melting pot right here. Whereas if you live in like Dunville, which is where I was born, uh, which is a very small town population of 3000, uh, that's totally different from living where I do now, which is a city, you know, population of what, like half a million or something. Oh, I've been following what's going on with you via your YouTube posts. Hope for a speedy recovery and wish you good luck on navigating Ontario's collapsing health system. Thank you. I need it. Can you spell Canada? Yes. I can. I can also sing all of the provinces from right to left in order. Which will sound very impressive to non-Canadians, but everyone from Canada is like, well, fucking, I can too. They drilled that shit into our heads in school. <laughs> you have a friend from the French side who said it's very snowy, and I've always wondered it, uh, what some of the differences were from your own experience. Okay, well, if you're talking like weather, yes, we do get pretty intense win winters here. Uh, we also get pretty intense summers here. See, I live in the Golden Horseshoe, which is where most Canadians live. The Golden Horseshoe is, if you look at a map of Canada, you notice how like most of the border with the United States is a straight line, right? But in the east, it dips down into the Great Lakes. Where it dips down, that's the Golden Horseshoe. That's where most Canadians live. It's farther south than quite a bit of the United States. And uh, although it's farther south than quite a bit of northern states, it still gets very cold, but it also gets very hot. Um, it's because uh, it's a high elevation piece of land, but is between three of the Great Lakes. The lakes are flat, of course, it's water, um, and then we're high elevation. So what happens is uh, the winds pick up speed coming down the hills, and that clashes with the wind that picks up speed in the other direction, going over the flat of the lakes. So you get freak weather and freak storms. So right here where most Canadians live, you get summers that are 35 degrees Celsius hot, you know, in the heat. Uh, and you get winters that are negative 35 degrees Celsius. That's not counting direct sun heat, which can make it hotter. That's not counting wind chill, which can make it colder. Um, it's not the hottest place in the world. It's not the coldest place in the world, but it's very hard to find a place that gets both this hot and this cold in the same year. Yeah, see, Fairy there is saying it's summer here and it was 30 Celsius the other day. You're in Costa Rica and it gets hotter here sometimes. I say that. I'm sure Costa Rica probably gets hotter then, like, I bet you the peak of Costa Rican summers is hotter than the peak of Ontario summers. I'm just pointing out that, yes, it does actually get hotter than 30 uh, Celsius here, which people wouldn't guess because when you hear about Canada, you just hear about the cold, you know? I bet you the peak heat in, in Costa Rica is probably in the 40s. Turn on the camera and do a magic trick. Uh, I could do, like, parlor tricks. I could, like, break all my fingers. But I, I actually don't know if the camera's set up right now. Parents always jokingly consider moving to Canada. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. That's the thing, is people always, people always like to flippantly say, like, I'm gonna move to Canada. If, um, has it always gone above 30? I heard that it didn't go very far above 30 when I was a kid, but that it's gotten hotter. But I don't remember that well when I was a kid, so I couldn't tell you. You'd have to go Google that. Um, people always flippantly say they're going to move to Canada, but they never know anything about Canada. So they don't know, like, how unbelievably expensive it is here. Like, I'll put, I'll 
<laughs> Why would you break your fingers as a parlor trick? Oh, they wouldn't actually break. Uh, I have ehlers stanlow syndrome. You know how like contortionists can bend all their joints out the wrong way? I can do that. It just looks like they're broken. They're not actually. They just bend too far. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think people realize how expensive it is in Ontario. Uh, this quarter, more people have moved out of Ontario than have moved between all of the provinces combined. Uh, this quarter, we have also had the most people leave Ontario uh, since the 1960s. That is how expensive Ontario, Canada is. And most of Canada is very expensive. Uh, I'm only here because I was born here and this is where my family is. Uh, we would very much like to leave. But, you know, you need, a, you need money for that. And uh, it's hard to save up money when uh, tax is so high and rent is so high and food costs are so high and everything. And especially hard to save up money when you can't work. <laughs> so, you know. I'm curious, is PTCP still going on? Kind of. Um, so PTCP is run by Guy now, Gadges. Um, I don't think he's done anything too big with it in, in a long while, although he did this really good YouTube video a while back where he just talks about like a lot of his history with PTCP, which I thought was like a super good video. Um, but we do have like vague plans to go back to doing some some streams and some fun stuff, get the crew back together for that. And um, that would be really fun. Uh, but, you know, it's, everyone's kind of busy. And I know that he really wants me to be there for it because obviously a lot of people associate that show with me just because I'm the most internet famous person who was on it. Um, but it's hard to right now because I'm not doing well because the health stuff. We're talking to him a few weeks ago, and yeah, he wants to do it bad. Yeah, I think it'd be a really fun time to get the crew back together and do some PTCP. For anyone who doesn't know PTCP, I'm seeing some people asking about it. Uh, and I don't blame you for not knowing about it, because it was before I ever blew up on YouTube. But we had a weekly charity stream called Pass the Controller, Please, where every single week we would get together on Friday for a couple of hours and just play some multiplayer game and have a fun time, and all of the proceeds would go to charity. There weren't many proceeds, like, uh, we don't know how much we raised in terms of direct donations because we literally just linked people a, a link to the charity, so we didn't have a tracker or anything. And as for, like, ad revenue on those videos, it was pretty much nothing. Like, <laughs> I, I think at the end of the year, uh, for a couple of years, I would go and, like, click on the analytics of, like, all of the top-viewed PTCP VODs just to see, like, Oh, how much money did they make on my YouTube channel? And the answer was like $5. <laughs> so I, I would just donate that much out of my PayPal or whatever to, um, uh, Ooh, what was the name of the charity? Um, Ooh, this is going to bug me. No, I should know this. I feel like it's a child's play. Thank you. God, I felt like it was on the tip of my tongue. I probably grand total donated like $20, $30 to them just through like the money on the YouTube videos that it generated. Cause like none of those videos ever got super big or anything. Um, that and uh, my, my uh, CPM, my like the, the amount of money I get off like off uh, advertisements on YouTube, like just the ads that play on YouTube videos. Uh, the amount of money I would make back then was, was really, really low. So it wasn't even worth much at the time. I would make more if I were to do it now. But even then, like, not tons. Tons of people don't watch my, uh, my Let's Plays. My Let's Plays aren't really a money-making thing for me. It's mostly for fun. Having done the intro by heart for several months, I should remember which charity we support. I know, right? I've been watching through a lot of your old stuff. That's how I came across PTCP. I'm currently watching through Diablo 2, which is quite interesting. That was a fun playthrough. Uh, that was me, Shally, and What a Geek. I think it was just the three of us. Um, that was a real fun one. If I remember right, like I, you know, I used to play it all the time. Shally remembered it from back in the day, and What a Geek was going in fresh. And we had a pretty good time. Oh, you have a new PC? That's awesome. Sorry, I should probably um I should probably read all these notifications that happened, right? You still despise setting up Diablo 2? Right, it was a pain in the ass, wasn't it? Didn't they re-release Diablo 2 now, and it's, like, easier to play? 
<laughs> Buzz Beelzebub, you've been enjoying WWE 2K16. I, uh, episode 43 of that is not publicly viewable now because it just got ID claimed by WWE a few days ago. Uh, they said that I have, I stole 12 seconds of footage from episode 40 of NXT Level Up. It got ID claimed. <laughs> My 2016 video got ID claimed for stealing footage of a TV show made in 2022. Fuck me. God damn it, YouTube. Piece of shit website. I disputed it and pointed out that I'm not a time traveler, uh, but I haven't gotten a response yet on the dispute. So I'm sorry if you haven't seen episode 43 yet. If they rejected the dispute, is it still in the playlist? It's still in the playlist, but I don't think anybody can watch it but me. Because it has a um, a copyright claim on it, it's literally not viewable to anyone but me. Um, I And I can't make it public. I don't have the option. Uh, so until they respond, there's nothing I can do about that. If they rejected the dispute, I could appeal it, but then they could put a strike on my account, and I don't trust that human's actually going to look at it. So I'm going to use the option to just trim out those 12 seconds instead, and that will get rid of the claim. As far as I can tell, those 12 seconds are just Seamus doing his entrance. I don't know how the fuck that got an ID claim. I don't remember if it, uh, if it was that exact episode, but I made a joke about Seamus just clobbering Cameron in a reply to your OP Twitter post. Yeah, I don't know if it's that exact. Um, I, I don't know if it's that exact video or not, but it was a Seamus entrance for what that's worth. And I have I've been told, by the way, that apparently uh, apparently Seamus has never been on NXT level up. So I don't even know why that Titantron video would get me claimed. I, I have no clue. But uh, YouTube is just the shits. <laughs> uh, did any of you guys ever do an LP of DMC? Is that Devil May Cry? Because I haven't. The only Devil May Cry I ever played was I played the first level of Dev Devil May Cry 2 when I was like 18. And it was... Uh, literally one of the least fun times I ever had playing a video game. That is my only memory of it. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't remember why anymore. I've heard that that's like the worst one. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I just remember it being a dreadful experience playing the first level of Devil May Cry 2. Worst in the franchise was your only experience. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it, it was literally just my sister picked it up at like a used game store. She was like, oh, that might be good. And it was laying around the house and I was looking for something to play. I was like, oh, I'll give that a try. Nope. <laughs> I don't think Devil May Cry is really my genre, to be honest. I don't think it's my kind of game anyway. Right, I keep saying I'm going to read these, uh, these notifications. Uh... Elfgar? Is that how you say that? As I live and breathe, good to see you live, big. Uh, good to see you, Big League MDB. 100 bits. Thank you. I appreciate that. Retro resubbing for 56 months. Jesus Christ. Uh. Oh, fucking. Sorry, my eyes are blurring. Uh, Blaze, thank you for gifting all those subs. I hope you guys enjoy the emotes on my face. Big Bro Ketsu? Ka Katsu? Thank you. Gifting all those subs. Lord Mars gifting subs. Blaze gifting Jesus more subs. Umbro, uh, Umbral Folly gifting a bunch of subs. Blaze did a cheer. Thank you for the cheer. Uh, oh, Jesus, how do I uh, umbosh? I, I don't know if that's even leet or not, but that person gifted a fuckload. Thank you. Uh, Blaze gifted more. Jesus. M Run gifted 100 bits. Good to see you doing well enough to stream again. It, it is nice to be able to stream again. Blaze, another bits thing. Carolyn, more bits. Thank you. Uh, my mom is a nurse and Ontario is the worst. Well, they do call it Worst Case Ontario. Detective Davey, thank you for all the gifted subs and the. Oh no, those bits. That was in more bits by Blaze. <laughs> Thank you for the bits. 
Uh, and another gift thing. Jesus. Can I like sort this? Oh, bits by uh, Green Clunk. Thank you. And Big Bro. Thank you. Okay, I think that's all of the things. Let me scroll back to the top. Yes, that was all the things. Thank you, everybody. People love you. I've I've definitely noticed that. Um, it was never my intention, but I seem to have won a lot of people over. I'm not entirely sure how, but uh, I appreciate it. It's funny because when I first uh, when I first collapsed and I linked my Patreon, there was a lot of people who were really really mean about the whole thing, especially on the post where I directly said, okay, I'm, go I'm gonna need some financial help. Doesn't matter that I said a million times, you know, don't feel pressured to donate, you never need to donate, uh, the show is always gonna be free, I'm never gonna paywall anything, um, stop pledging if you, if you can't afford it, uh, always spend money on you and your family first, all of those things, which I stand by, you know I stand by it, in fact, a lot of people who pledged to my Patreon messaged me because they got a kick out of how my most recent Patreon post was from years ago. My most recent Patreon post was when COVID started, where I literally just made a post telling everybody, hey, I know that things are financially hard right now for everybody, so if anybody wants to unpledge, just go ahead and unpledge. It's totally fine. No hard feelings. I'll be fine. Uh, you take care of you and yours. And so a lot of people found it funny that I was getting called greedy for uh, linking my Patreon when my most recent Patreon post was at the beginning of COVID and I just said to everybody, oh, it's okay on pledge. I just blew up on YouTube. You don't need to take care of me. I'll be fine. But that's the thing. People will just make shit up about you. People will get some weird idea on, in their head about how you are just based on, I don't know, preconceptions or how other YouTubers are or something like that. And they get really, really shitty about it. Oh my god. Like, there's that guy, uh, there was two guys who thought it was a really fun prank to go on all of my, uh, YouTube community posts. And they would say, I just saw, I just saw the news. It's so sad that you died right after you made this post, crying face. Just trying to, like, ha, funny prank, let's convince people he died. What an awful thing to say. <laughs> Could you imagine doing that? People are crazy. AMDB, am I still banned on your Discord? I think you are. Um, I mean, you agreed with it. <laughs> I'm willing to give you amnesty again, because it, it has been a long time. But dude, please... Please, just don't keep pulling the same shit that you pulled last time. Because I remember when I talked to you on the SFO Discord that one time, I ended up talking to, uh, I ended up talking to Dev like years later, and I brought up that funny moment. He's like, oh yeah, funny story. That guy ended up getting banned from my server two months later. Dude, you seem to get banned everywhere you go. <laughs> I got nothing personal against you, but you got- everyone voted for you to be banned and you agreed with it and then you got angry when they all voted for it. It's nothing personal, but... SFO, what's that? You know. We literally voice chatted on his Discord server once. Anyway. What a reputation, am I right? <laughs> Um, wait, MDB has a Discord? Yeah, dude, it's, uh, linked in the description of all of my YouTube videos. <laughs> that, that happens all the time, where someone will be like, dude, I didn't know you had this thing, and I'm like, yeah, man, it's in all of my videos, no one reads the description. And I'll blame you, like, look, I've, I've seen the statistics that say, like, 1% of people, 1% of people read YouTube descriptions. So I'm not gonna blame anyone for it, because, like, I'm clearly the weirdo for reading it. Like, if 1% of people read the descriptions, then, like, clearly I'm the outlier here, and you guys are the normal ones for not reading it. <laughs> people don't read descriptions anymore. See, I'm the weirdo who does. 
when I want to like go follow someone on Twitter or whatever, the first thing I do is I go to their YouTube description. I go to their YouTube page and their about page. And if it's not linked there, then I click on their newest video and I read the description and see if they got social media links. You know? <laughs> I never claimed to be normal. How dare. <laughs> You're not weird, MDB. I have read it, but not all of them. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm weird, but I'm fine with that. Apparently people don't read captions and stuff on social media posts either, but I always do. Yeah, me too. Unless you mean like closed captions. Although when I used to watch TV, I did used to always watch TV with subtitles on. I don't really know why. I just, uh, I don't know, liked it. And it was funny sometimes because uh, sometimes the subtitles would be really bad. <laughs> like to think I'm chaotic good, but I'm probably more lawful neutral. My, uh, my, um, Skype name, probably to this day, I haven't been on Skype in years and years, um, but it's probably my all-time favorite username that I've had, and I would love to go back to it on Twitter sometime, but right now I kind of want to keep it on this, um, is, uh, my dry bread is neutral good. Because that's, that's how I see myself in terms of the D&D alignment chart. Any CK3 or Bannerlord coming up? Uh, literally nothing is coming up right now because of my extreme health issues. <laughs> I'm working a little bit on a Pokemon challenge, um, but I can't even work on it every single day. It's just whenever I'm capable of working on it, so there is no, no news on when that's coming out. And I have not recorded any kind of Let's Play or anything like that in months. This stream is literally the first time I've talked into a microphone for any kind of an audience in three months because I haven't been able to work because of my health. Yeah, nothing's coming up except for my heart rate. <laughs> You want to imagine me as a Nancy Drew detective? We need to do more Nancy Drew. Hey, so we're resuming the randomizer tomorrow, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah, we'll resume the randomizer as soon as I go off air. That'll be a great way to give me a heart attack. <laughs> we do need to resume that. I swear, the second we were going to resume that, like literally we had plans to resume that, I collapsed. I wasn't sure what was wrong yet. When I collapsed, um, we thought it was a collapsed lung at first because uh, my breathing was so fucked up. And I had been coughing for like two months at that point because of whatever was wrong with my throat. But um, literally, while I was laying on the bed waiting for the paramedics to arrive after we called 911, I told Fatima, hey, can you go and message uh, what a geek and let him know what happened and that I don't think I'll be good for the recording tomorrow. <laughs> so like literally, well, I was, I was not sure if I was dying or not when it first happened and we were waiting for the paramedics to arrive. Uh, top priority was call mom, let her know, uh, and let what a geek know I can't record tomorrow. Um, and as soon as I got to the hospital, I think it was, I tweeted out and let people know what was going on. Oh, and then after that, I started saying, like, who gets what? Because, you know, I don't have a will. So I just needed to, you know, tell Fatima, like, okay, if I'm dying right now, here's who gets what, you know? But I didn't die, which is nice. Tell me you're a workaholic without telling me you're a workaholic. I've already told you I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I remember thinking my request to resume a randomizer induced a heart attack. No, it turns out my heart is very healthy, which is nice. Uh, it's nice to have an actual cardiologist tell me that uh, my heart is very healthy. Wasn't it in the middle of recording that you collapsed? No. Um, in the middle of a voiceover, my heart rate started raising and I said I, I should go lay down. 
Uh, but that was after my collapse and that didn't make me collapse again. Um, although my heart rate was getting bad and I did have to go lay down. Um, no, I wasn't recording when I collapsed. I was literally just sitting in my chair at my computer on my browser doing nothing in particular. Um, I didn't even realize my heart rate was going so crazy, uh, until I felt that awful feeling in my left side. But like, um, when I, so I wear a Fitbit, so it monitors my heart rate 24 seven. So, uh, like, I think it was like the next week or something. I was, I was like, Hey, I can go check what my heart rate was. Oh, thank you to whoever anonymously gifted those. Um, I realized, Oh, I can go back and check. Um, so I, I went back and I checked and I realized, oh, my heart rate while sitting still in a chair was like 110 for two hours before my collapse. Now, 110 is like not the craziest heart rate for me. That's slightly below my fat burn zone for my age demographic. Fat burn being like the, you know, the heart rate once you start like really burning fat. And when I'm doing cardio, my heart rate's like 150 which is, uh, you know, a, another normal heart rate for when doing high intensity cardio. And I've done a lot of cardio. Like I used to do a lot of cardio before the collapse, obviously. So those heart rates aren't abnormal for me. And when I collapsed, my heart rate was like 135, which is still below cardio level. Cardio level is 140. So it's not that the heart rate in itself was too high for my heart to handle. It's that the heart rate was way too high considering I was laying down, you know, like that when I'm laying down, my heart rate should be in the 70s or even high 60s. My resting heart rate used to be 65. Then it, at its worst, it was 74. So the resting heart rate being like the lowest it, it rests at, basically. Um, it, it climbed up to like 74 from like two months of inactivity when I was bedridden. Uh, but now I've got it back down to like 70 just through walking more. We call that lurking. <laughs> um, but yeah, like sometimes my heart rate just skyrockets up. It's awful. Oh, Vice of Legends got a, a gift. He's been around forever. Vice Vice? I don't know how to pronounce that. But Vice, uh, something really cool. Uh, I know you've been in the community for, for fucking ever. Uh, I don't know if I've pointed this out to you before. But there's a channel that I quite like watching. Um, oh, I feel so bad that I'm blanking on the name now. I want to say it's One Evil Eye. I feel really bad for forgetting the name because I've watched, I think, all of his videos and they're fucking phenomenal. But he's probably most well known for doing really great documentary style deep dives on, uh, on speedruns of a bunch of Sierra games, you know, King's Quest, Space Quest, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, you got brought up in one of those as uh, I think a world record holder. I don't know if he's in the chat for sure. One short eye, thank you. First time chat, I'm surprised this is first time chat considering you've been around for so long. Anyway, yeah, I, I saw that you were one of the record holders. I thought that was pretty fucking cool. I think I commented about it on the video. So congrats on that, uh, on that fucking record. That's awesome. Or was it a record or was it that you like found a, a trick or I don't remember. It was a while ago now, but you did something cool. <laughs> um, have they found a fix for your heart rate yet? No, uh, but I have pretty much not a fix, but I found out what helps it. Um, it's just more evidence to, to the, the, I guess it's technically not 100% confirmed since the MRI hasn't happened yet, but I've had two different doctors tell me that it's almost 100% this. It's almost 100% a pinched nerve in my neck due to a herniated disc. Um, and I've noticed that when my posture is very, very good and when my back and my neck are very strong and my back and neck are very supported, my average heart rate is far lower. When I say far lower, I mean low 70s instead of fucking 105. Um, and if I put myself in a really bad posture, then my heart rate goes way above what it should be for just hunching. So it seems to be pinching a nerve. The nerve is firing nerves through my body and my heart does not know how to handle that. It could also be pinching an artery 
if an artery gets pinched, that can also make your work start your heart start working much harder. Well, mentions posture, and I sit properly. My back cracks. I wonder why my, my back hurts. Yeah, you're probably going to want to do some at home physio stuff for that. Um, a couple years ago, I did a lot of work at home to just fix my posture, and it helped so much. It's just like a stretching routine and a few very simple um, at home exercises you can do with some, like, um, you know, like exercise bands. You can buy them on Amazon for dirt cheap. Um, get some of those, go on AthleanX's YouTube channel, and he has all kinds of great videos teaching you how to unhunch your back, steps to stretching and exercising to fix your posture and make it comfortable. Because it's not just stretching out a bunch of muscles that get, um, you know, when your posture is bad for a long time, a lot of muscles are going to be uh, compressed for a long time. And so they're pulling your body into that bad posture. You need to get those stretched out so that they're not pulling you into the bad posture. But then the muscles that have been stretched for too long because, you know, like back muscles, uh, if you're hunching, those will have been stretched for too long so they'll get weak. So you also need to build up the muscles there so that they're stronger. And in the end, you, yeah, don't be a shrimp. That's that's what I say is don't get all shrimpy. Um, you you want to build up those muscles and you want to stretch the muscles on the other side. So like chest and arm muscles and, and some hamstrings you want to you want to stretch your hamstrings so that that doesn't pull your hips forward. And eventually, it will be comfortable to have proper posture. You just need to uh, build up the muscle a little bit and stretch out the ones that get too tight. You can have it fixed in 30 days. It's not even that bad. It's like five minutes a day. Could it be from Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome? Yeah, um, that's probably why my disc got fucked up, is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I feel mildly self-conscious uh, that I'm on a normal wooden chair with a uh, with a pair of cushions propping up my mildly sore back. Yeah, make sure to stand up every 25 minutes and stretch. Ouch, herniated disc. I needed surgery on my L4, L5 vertebrae a few years back that was causing nerve pains all that down my left side. Yep, left side's what I've got. Uh, the disc was basically smashed and leaking at, all over the nerves and causing sciatica down the leg. Yeah, I uh, I haven't had it down my legs severely yet. I have had a, an occasional couple little stings in my legs when I was really bedridden and bad. Uh, but now, at the point I'm at now, um, the nerves in my left arm are very mild. It's only in certain positions. It's gotten a lot better with the physiotherapy. Um, I do still get pains in my ribs and in my chest. Uh, but from what I've read, uh, it does seem like that is just a thing that can happen from this, and it isn't necessarily a sign of anything more dangerous. At least you live in Canada, so maybe this medical stuff costs less than compared to in America. See, that's the thing. Where I live, people usually cross the border into the United States um, and so that they can get medical treatment. Because over here, you will wait for so long that you may die. That, that isn't just, like, hyper... That's not hyperbole. Um, I had a family friend die of cancer recently because of this. Because her tests took so long. Uh, this is a routine thing here. There are people who routinely will go across the border to Michigan so that they can get a diagnosis in the United States so that they can take the diagnosis back to Canada to hopefully get treated because it can take you half of a year to get diagnosed. It is cheaper to do that than to not be able to work for a half of a year. And unemployment here? Unemployment here is $2,000. It also takes you a long time to get on unemployment. But $2,000 no longer covers rent. I don't mean my rent. I mean, like, if you're renting a one-bedroom apartment in Ontario and you're also paying for food, then I don't think you can even afford to have a car. And in Canada, uh, it is illegal to have an uninsured car. So you have to pay your car insurance. Uh, uh, so so um, unemployment does not cover uh, living, basically, here. So it's, it is cheaper to actually go to the United States and get a diagnosis there. Uh, what was the channel you said to look into for fixing posture? Oh, Athlean X. 
Yes, and also rent usually doesn't cover heat, water, and power. Uh, heat is incredibly important, by the way, because Canadian winters, you will die without heat. In fact, it is illegal to shut off for a company to shut off your heat in the winter in Canada because it, it would kill you. So uh, that, you know, that's how intense the winters are here. Yeah, that's the channel, What a Geek. Uh, really, really good fitness channel in general. Um, but their videos on correcting posture are especially good. Um, Jeff Cavaliero, the guy who runs that show, is a, a licensed physiotherapist. He's got tons and tons and tons of videos, so you can find lots of different videos that can help you with posture. He's been around forever. Oh, sorry, just stretching a little. Housing situation in Canada sounds miserable. Yeah, I remember people talking about the Ontario housing situation and calling it a housing crisis when I was a child. It's only gotten worse. It's only in the last few months that um, houses stopped getting bought within like a couple days of being on the market. Because the thing is, uh, all the housing here just gets bought by rich people overseas, usually from like China or the Middle East. And so rent just keeps going up and up and up, and it's not affordable for the people who live here because people aren't buying houses here and then living in the houses. Um, people who are rich from overseas buy the houses here and then rent them out to the local population at ridiculous prices. Australia had the same problem, but it's reversing. Yeah, Canada and Australia often have issues that mirror each other. It's almost shocking how often that happens where Ontario and, um, Ontario and, sorry, not just Ontario, Canada and Australia have very similar issues. Rich people suck. It's not specifically a rich people thing. It's a, uh, people who are rich from overseas buying into our market thing and ruining the price of everything. It's to the point that a lot of places are rent controlled so that they can't raise the rent by more than 1.6% a year while someone is living there. Um, but that's also, uh, that's also caused a problem where landlords will find any reason to try and evict you because they know if they evict you, then they can raise the rent by like a thousand dollars after you're pulled out of the place. And then they can rent it out to usually some person moving in from another country who can afford it. Because in Canada, you can purchase citizenship. Uh, you can actually purchase coming into the country and living here. Uh, you don't need to pass tests. There are tests you can do and everything. But you can also just buy your way in. Uh, the government says the reason you can do that is because um, it's the government's prerogative to make sure that you don't move into the country and instantly just become impoverished because that's not good for anybody. They don't want you to be poor. And if you are poor, then you'll be on welfare and that's a drain on resources and that pisses off everybody. And so it's in their best interest that if you move here, you can afford to live here. So that is the reason why they say that if you can afford to buy your way in, then that's a legit way to come in. Um, it doesn't really work that way. It's mostly just an income source for the government. Because, you know, the government will always try to find a way to get more money rather than find a way to spend less money. can't marry my fiance we're both disabled and they're in the u.s and i'm in the uk and yeah don't have enough money and it's crushing yeah i feel bad for you on that we're pushing like 100 plus people through the a week at the moment at our at our ward where was it you say that you work again sorry i i saw that you wrote earlier where you work at, but I, um, <laughs> I, I, I forget now. Always a good question. Can I afford to be Canadian? Probably not. A Canadians born here can't afford to be Canadian. That's why we're all leaving. It's like I was saying before, it's record numbers of people leaving Ontario right now. We haven't had this many people leave Ontario in one quarter of a year since the 1960s. That is how bad the housing crisis has gotten. It's hitting a tipping point. Nobody can afford a home. 
I remember back in when I was in high school, the teachers were flat out telling us, you will probably be living with your parents until you're 30, and you may never be able to afford a house in Canada. And I'm 30 now, and although I lucked out and I started making good enough money that I'm not living with my mom, uh, it's because we lost our house. You know, I'm the one paying for her place. You know, Mudahar is leaving Canada because of content laws. Yeah, that's Bill C-11. And it looks like it's going through. I don't blame him for leaving. There's better reasons to leave Canada than just be Bill C-11, but Bill C-11 is pretty bad. Uh, so I don't like to eat on stream because it's, it's loud and gross, but I'm going to eat some chips and you can't stop me. Mudahar's cool. And good on him for uh, apologizing for taking the sponsorship from... Uh, what was it? Um, oh, what's that company called? Established Claims? You guys been seeing the, the adverts for that on YouTube? YouTuber has been doing the uh, sponsorships with that. It's the company where they claim that like, oh, you can buy some land in uh, in Scotland and then you'll be a lady or lord. It's a great novelty gift. No, it turns out it's a Chinese scam. Yeah, that's a scam. Don't do that. I have it. What's wrong with it? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's Miss Vicky's original. Good chips. Put it this way. Did you really think you could go buy land in Scotland for $50? Do you have any idea what land costs? See, well, you got to understand, not all YouTubers are like me. I'm really, really um, picky about my sponsorships. I get a lot of offers. I get a lot of offers, literally weekly. I get offers for sp sponsorships. And I've agreed to literally two of them <laughs> because I want it to be something that I actually like. And one of them, I stopped doing sponsorships with them for, uh, because, um, actually no, three, I've done three companies now. Sorry. One of them I stopped doing sponsorship with, even though I like the service, just because they were so annoying to work with because <laughs> they kept trying to change my script and I refused to let them change my script. Looking forward to Seven Days to Die? Me too. I look forward to when I'm good enough to record it again. These chips are so good. So yeah, don't go assuming that YouTubers who who did a sponsorship with that, uh, with that site, established claims or whatever it is. Don't assume that they knew it was a Chinese scam. I bet you like 99% of them had no idea that it was a scam. But what you do have to understand is a lot of YouTubers don't really look that hard into sponsorships before they take it. No, or his sponsorship from you. I mean, they ask me every single week, but I'm just not interested. I don't play mobile games. I'm just not interested in it. And that is why I won't do a raid sponsorship. I don't have a big issue with raid as a game. It seems fine enough. People get angry that it's like a gotcha game, but like there's a million gotcha games out there who gives a shit. You can play it if you want to play it. It's your own decision. Um, I don't sponsor it because one, they'll definitely, I'm not big enough that they're going to let me do my own script. And two, it's just not a product I'm interested in. So I don't care if they keep offering me thousands of dollars. The answer is no. Um, so yeah, uh, a lot of YouTubers don't look super hardcore into, um, into the sponsorships and like, where does the money come from? Where is the company based? Stuff like that, you know? So I just don't take any sponsorship if I don't like the product. Or 
I don't take it if I have a moral issue with it. So like if the company is like, if it's a state owned Chinese company, no, I, I won't do it. I've got family in Hong Kong and um, I know how bad the Chinese Communist Party is and how awful they've treated the people of Hong Kong. I refuse. Any company in China that has more than 50 employees by law has to have a member of the Chinese Communist Party on staff basically just to monitor what they do. And that means that all of the information that goes through that company is fed to the Chinese Communist Party. I have massive moral issues with that. I refuse to to take take their money and I refuse to um, feed them in any way. Big, uh, big ups from me on your China stance. I've had a hardline stance on the Chinese Communist Party for a long time. I love China. I love my family in China. And that is why I hate the Chinese Communist Party, uh, because they are a fucking blight on what should be a great nation. They treat their people like their lives are absolutely meaningless and no human should be treated that way. You know, if, if we can all call out Qatar and say that we shouldn't, you know, we should all shit on them for having slavery, then we should probably all be shitting on the Communist uh, Party of China for using rape as torture and committing a genocide. Like, <laughs> it's horrible. Just join. Good to hear your voice again. It's good to be here. Is it a good idea to tell the YouTuber I watch about the established title scam? Yeah, probably. They might not know. One, that's two countries you've named in the stream that I've lived in. Want to name drop Japan next? I don't know what to say about Japan. I'm pretty serious about my whole stance against the Chinese Communist Party. If any of you are fans of um, China Uncensored, for instance, you may notice China Uncensored's Twitter doesn't follow many people, but they follow me. Yeah, um, my uncle met with uh, met with uh, Chris Chappell forever ago, back when Chris Chappell was doing his journalism on the ground in Hong Kong. Um, uh, Chris is a cool dude. I've talked with him before. He emailed me when I collapsed and just wished me well and everything. And their new channel, uh, Gamers Un Unbeaten, I almost said uncensored, Gamers Unbeaten, uh, I helped teach them how to stream after they had some issues with their first stream. Um, they want me on as a guest, actually. It's just I collapsed and I haven't been able to. Uh, but I quite like them. They're good people. Matt's a funny guy. Oh, that was delicious. What'd she eat? Mm, sorry, I just finished. It was Miss Vicky's chips. Crisps. Yes, they are sometimes called crisps. Any plans for Turkey Day? Uh, I'm not American. Um, I'm Canadian. Uh, our Thanksgiving was before Halloween. Happy uh, Thanksgiving to the Americans, though. Yeah, the main difference between Canadian Thanksgiving and American Thanksgiving is that Canadian Thanksgiving is spookier because during Canadian Thanksgiving, people already have their Halloween decorations up.
Oh, thank you for the, uh, for the bits. I appreciate. How long have I been going? A little over an hour? Okay. Oh my god, almost 200 of you are here just to watch me talk about nothing in particular. I took a mint. Yes, Prince Alexander. That's what they're there for. Hold on, where's my button? Where's the button? Oh, I got a button here. Where is it? There you go. What uh, holidays do you celebrate that are different than Americans? Um, there's like... I mean, oh, it didn't, oh, right, it didn't play on your end because I have this muted. My bad. Let me try that again. Ah, life-giving water. Nectar of the gods. Uh, sorry, I had, I had the desktop audio muted. Anyway, um, we have like a few national days. It's hard to even call them holidays um, that America doesn't have, but it's like, just, it's just like, uh civic holidays you know like one of them is literally called civic holiday where it's just we have a mandatory amount of days off a year from like um like government civic holidays that we're supposed to have off a year that everyone gets off um and so we have some generic days for that like we have a day called family day it's just a civic holiday there's no history behind it. It was made, like, during my lifetime. You know? So I don't really have any, uh... Probably no... We don't really have any interesting days that, uh... <laughs> the might... To honor the might... The mighty Honda Civic, yes. That is why we have Civic Holiday. To honor the mighty Honda Civic. I take it Canada isn't that fond of its history then? Um, reasonably fond of its history. It's just we don't really have any very noteworthy days. Could you do the pottery smash? Yes. Mm, where is that one? Bet I can smash that. That is not the right one. That is indeed Shadow the Hedgehog. Bet I can smash that. See, it's called Smash. You can see why I'd be confused. No, Ceramic Vase is the one I want. There you go. That Shadow the Hedgehog line is fucking funny, though. Um, I once downloaded the uh, sound pack of every single line of Shadow the Hedgehog in the video game Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, just so that I, I would have fodder for, like, soundboards. And uh, the funniest one was, bet I could smash that. I was mostly on it so I could look for Maria. And I did find it. Where do you get your sound effects? Uh, all around the internet. There's no, like, one specific place, you know? On the note of the Steam Deck uh, getting mixed up, press the water button again. Okay. Um, oh, hold on. Where was it? There we go. That button. That sounds like a water drop, right? The Guild 2 Ceramic Break, a classic. Yes, that was in Guild 2. That was in many movies, many games. That is a generic sound effect that's been used forever. You'll hear it on Red Letter Media all the time. That exact pottery smash, it's ceramic vase break dot something. Yeah, that water drop noise is not a water drop. That is noise that what a geek makes with his mouth. And I put it on my soundboard because it's it's amazing. Got the Wilhelm scream? Nah. I've got this. You were close. And this. You were close. One is the official. One of them is what a geek. You were watching Duck Dynasty recently? 
First one was Wada, yeah. Shoutouts to Ferris, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, by the way. I love that as soon as you did the water drop noise, I was able to say, did you learn that because you watched it in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and you wanted to learn how to do it? And the answer was yes. And the difference between me and you is you figured it out. <laughs> First time here, how are you? I've been better, but I've definitely been worse. That was a very appropriate line to have imitated. It helps to know how to whistle. I'm sure that does help, because I've never been able to figure out how to whistle. I've watched tutorials, but I've just never gotten it to work. Sucks, you know? Oh, thanks for the bits. So mid? Yeah, kinda. I mean worse <laughs> tutorials for whistling yeah there's tutorials for everything why wouldn't there be tutorials for whistling if you can be taught it there will be a tutorial for it oh duck dynasty uh there you go. So is that noise actually in the show? I've never watched the show. I've only played the hilarious video game. I did a Let's Play of the Duck Dynasty video game. It was great. <laughs> Didn't you say you never learned how to whistle in a playthrough? Yeah, probably. Slide whistles are fucking based. I do have a slide whistle sound effect. Um, it's not on my soundboard, though. Uh, I recently watched, rewatched your Pokemon Snap series. In, any intention on playing the new one? I played a little bit of it on my own just while I was bedridden, and it was pretty fun. So maybe I'll play it on the show? I don't really know. I want my iPad now, daddy. Everybody loves the L.A. Noir Let's Play. Oh my god, that was a fun one. I bet you don't even have any V-Bucks. And the paper said you have a small dick. Oh, <laughs> uh, the L.A. Noir. Let's play. <laughs> Did you ever learn how to read? Not according to Wikipedia. I don't remember that particular sound being in the show, but there's a lot like it. Okay. See you, Sir Lobster. Hope you sleep well. Good to see you, too. Oh, oh man. I'm back sore. Did your annual pilgrimage this week and rewatched all of Flash Trash again? Oh, there are some good episodes. We really want to bring that back. People just need to send game requests to Brandon already. I think he's got a few that he hasn't gotten around to yet. But, like, there's still so much out there to play. Stretch? I'm doing little stretches here and there, but I do probably need to stand up and do a more proper stretch. I am indeed the best Nancy Drew Let's player. I've heard that there's another guy who actually Let's Plays all the Nancy Drew games, and I'm sure he's great. But I'm the greatest Nancy Drew pl Let's Player alive! Uh, perhaps go and lay down. Uh, it's not quite ready for me to lay down yet. I only really have to lay down if my heart rate gets really crazy. If it's consistently above 100 while I'm sitting down, then I usually have to lay down before it'll uh, go back to normal. Have you thought of doing a new Journey series? Sun and Moon would be cool with Brandon and Wada. I do want to do Sun and Moon with Brandon and Wada Geek. I wouldn't even mind doing it soonish. I, I say soonish. What I mean by soonish is like soonish once I'm back in the full swing of Let's Plays. But I also want to do Pokemon Stadium 2 soonish, you know? And I don't want to do like too many Pokemon things at once because I can only handle so much Pokemon at once. I, I already do the challenges and that's a lot of Pokemon. 
And before I do that, I want to do some post game stuff in, um, what's it called? I want to do some post game stuff in, uh, Pokemon mystery dungeon. That was it. Have you checked out Scarlet and uh, Violet yet? Nope. I'm waiting until I'm healthy enough to play it on the show. I have bought uh, Scarlet, but I have not booted up the game yet. My first time booting it will be on stream. Strongly recommend the Ultra versions instead of base ones. So is the Ultra version like Pokemon Yellow, where it's like a more updated version? Or is it like Black 2 and White 2, where it's like a different story in the same world? Have uh have you heard from it in Twitter? Well read. I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, basically the yellow comparison. Okay. Okay, yeah. If it's like the yellow comparison thing, where it's just like an updated version, like a crystal or something, then yeah, totally. We'll do ultra version. Ultra version is better. I would hope. I would hope it's not worse. That'd be a real problem. Then I'm going to do Sword and Shield one day because I never finished that. Oh, Scarlet and Violet, have you read what people are saying? Uh, not really. I haven't done any research into it, but I've seen a bunch of little Twitter videos of hilarious glitches. Um, so I know it's like buggy as fuck in really funny ways. That's about it. I think I saw like one or two new Pokemon. I'm kind of trying to stay not totally blind, like... It's not the end of the world if I see something, but like, I'm not really interested in looking into it. I just want to wait until uh, I can play it. Isn't the charm of watching your show having interruptions of a year or so in Let's Plays? I mean, lately, yeah, Jesus. favorite glitch is one gym leader floating several feet in the air. That's hilarious. So many people actually trying to refund the game. I don't want to get too much into the game. I haven't played it yet. See ya, Kyle. How are you coping mentally? Uh, as I can imagine, this is really hard for you and hope you're doing good. I'm okay. Um, I don't know. I've been through a lot of shitty times in my life. I've been through worse than this. There's obviously the worry about I don't want to die. And like, there's been points in, in this whole thing where I don't know if I am dying of something, you know, you never know when you got cancer or something. And we still don't know 100%, I guess. Um, but I'm improving. So that's probably good, you know? Um, I don't know. Mentally, I've been doing okay. Uh, overall, it's, it's been nice to be able to go to the computer again, even if sometimes I still have to go lay down. And, uh, it's been nice to, uh, what was it? It's been nice to be able to walk again because being able to barely walk for like a month and a half was really rough. Mentally, that was not that bad. Where are you going if Elon kills Twitter? I don't think he's going to, to be honest. They've already laid off 80% of the staff, and the only difference that I can see from a performance point on the website is they're actually, for the first time in their history, properly banning child porn. So, uh, you know, what does that say about how incompetent the previous management was? Oh. Would we be able to play some uh, Mario Party for PTCP? I don't see why not. I'd love to. Project Zomboid is so fun. People are talking about it in the chat. I don't know why people are talking about it in the chat, but Project Zomboid is awesome. Oh, hey, my buddy's playing Project Zomboid right now. He's streaming it for like <laughs> one and a half thousand people. You guys know uh, Ambiguous Amphibian? He's a fucking cool dude. I like him. We've been friends since before he blew up. Uh, he's such a nice guy. And he hasn't changed at all since he blew up. That's how you know he's a good guy. 
But before he blew up, I remember him when he had like, a, I think like a thousand subscribers or something. And he was so fucking friendly, not just on air, but off air. He's just a really good dude. He's genuine, you know? You watch him on YouTube? He's awesome. Met a lot of great people on Twitch, including you, Andy Thank you. Can you repeat the name of the streamer? Ambiguous Amphibian. He's also on YouTube. He's mostly a YouTuber. Uh, but he's great. You have no idea how I miss the Mario Party videos. They're so good, aren't they? Wasn't uh, Speaking of Kenshi, wasn't there a video you had in mind regarding that game at some point? Yeah, I have like a script for it and like tons and tons of footage of it from more than a year ago now where I'm trying... I, it started off as a guide on like leveling up on the default start without ever getting another party member. Like how to go from like zero to hero, you know, with one dude. And I would literally just document me trying to figure out how to do it. And I got really good at it and I got really far and it's so fun. I got all this footage and all this script. And as I wrote and I wrote and I wrote, it started to just become the journey of this guy, you know? So I feel like that video has kind of evolved over the course of making it to the point that I kind of just want it to be like a, a series almost. Where, yeah, I'm, I'm teaching you how I figured out how to level up a guy solo in case you want to do it. But it's also just, also just kind of the journey of uh, having fun with Kenshi, you know? I don't care if no one watches it. I kind of figure no one will. But I think it'll be a fun time. Start a new job. Got a lovely text from the boyfriend. Have an MDB stream. That sounds like a good day. Fun fact, if you look up my Kenshi Let's Play, my streaming series on YouTube, you can see Ambiguous Amphibian join my chat. This was before he blew up on YouTube. You can see him join in the chat. We have some pleasantries because he's my friend. And he's like, I've heard about this game. It seems so cool. I think I'm going to get into it. You can actually watch him in the chat have his moment where he discovered Kenshi and was like, I'm going to go play this game. This looks fun. And you can watch that on my channel. It's in my Kenshi uh, streaming series. It's in the playlists. You can see the moment that the famous ambiguous amphibian discovered Kenshi and was like, I'm going to play this thing. And then he ended up blowing up doing a Kenshi series. How fucking cool is that? That's a piece of history right there on my channel. You're right. It, it is in the book. Yes, it's in the book. I remember this stream. It was very cool to see his origin story. Yeah. Now, he did do videos before that. Um, kind of too big for me. I prefer smaller creators to watch. He's such a good dude, though. Watch his YouTube channel. Uh, anyway. Um, what was I saying? Uh, it wasn't exactly his origin story. That's like the origin of him getting into Kenshi, sure. But um, before that, he was doing Project Zomboid videos and Let's Plays. And I was in some of his Project Zomboid Let's Plays on YouTube. Uh, it was really fun. That's why I've got some old videos on my channel with him in it. He just kind of reached out to me one day when he was trying to reach out to people who played Project Zomboid who he thought would be fun to play with. And normally I don't respond to those things because I mostly just play games with my friends, you know? But... I don't know, just something about him. He just came across as a really nice dude, and I like making friends. It's my favorite part of doing YouTube and Twitch and all that is making friends, reaching out to people. And when I got talking to him, I just realized, like, nah, this, this dude's awesome. I'm absolutely doing videos with him. He's great. Can't say enough good things about him. I remember once he went to uh, North Carolina to meet up with another uh, small YouTuber who was in that same group of people who were all playing Project Zomboid together, and they got a picture taken together at a restaurant, and they sent it to me and just let me know that they're thinking of me. 
That was like the fucking nicest thing in the world. That was so cool of them. Have you heard some of Sonic Frontier's OST? Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't really kept up. I'm going to fight a message in. Just sending him a sappy message real quick. Give me a second. <laughs> There we go. Just let him know. Ah, oh, life giving water. The nectar of the gods. Want to find uh, more like gaming and making friends, especially like once my disability got worse. Uh, like I'm at home a lot, man. That sucks. Uh, oh, uh, have you heard of spectrobes before? Hmm. Okay, the, the, the word looks familiar, but I think it's just because I know uh, a streamer with a very similar username, and I might, you know, just look at that, and it, it kind of looks like it, you know? Uh, what is spectrobes? Is that, a, is that a YouTuber or a streamer or a video game? I could see it being any of them. Have to go, but I'll keep watching all your playthroughs as much as I can. I hope you enjoy them. Only watch them if you're having fun. Don't don't feel like you have to. You don't owe me anything. It's a Pokemon-like RPG. I don't think I know it. I'm trying to think of Pokemon like RPGs that I do know about because, you know, people tell me about stuff. And uh, the only one that's coming to mind right away is that. Ah, shit, I'm forgetting the name of the other one, to be honest. Ah, I don't remember the name. Man, it gets dark so early here now. credit my playthrough of bro Forest into getting you into it that's a fun game temtem thank you that's the one i was thinking of pokemon stadium is probably my favorite playthrough i hope you know how much you've affected my lexicon I say a lot of things in the same tone as kick that baby. Yeah, I've heard that a lot that I've really I have um, really severely damaged the vernacular of many a people. And I totally get it because it's happened to me, too. I, I do indeed say for true and for trucity and for Trusseldorf. <laughs> All because of my unabashed love of NL and DPW. F 
fuck green pizza. You're damn right. Any specific video which makes the most money from ads. Not that I'm aware of. Hey everyone, time to beat up an old man. <laughs> when did I say that? What was the context? Sometimes people come at me with quotes that I've said over the last like 12 years of Let's Plays, and I don't even remember when I said them or the context. You never know what joke is going to stick with someone. For all the ones that I do remember, there's a million that I don't remember. <laughs> Stadium and Nancy Drew are two timeless playthroughs that I love. Yeah, those are good ones. Probably when you fought an old man in round one of Pika Cup. See, I don't remember... When I think of the things that I remember in the stadium playthrough, it's like... Fighting with the controller, uh, trying to get the multiplayer to work for the mini games, and that time when What A Geek and Branded started taking over, so I started just fucking with all the visual effects in OBS. That was fun. <laughs> Or the time when we couldn't get the game working, so we just played Mario Party. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, if we want a Lent Hill, that was great. Kick That Baby might have been from the forest. No, Kick That Baby was from uh, Pokemon Emerald with Fatima. It was a uh, stomp. It was stomp that baby. Because I was talking about how, like, every time I go on my Discord server, they all say, oh, rude and disrespectful, rude and disrespectful. They just want to parrot whatever Fatima says all day long. Why are you? Why do they never quote me? I, I, I come on here and I'm like, ha ha, stomp the baby. <laughs> and then it became a whole thing. Hey, Hero. It's going better than it's been. How have you been? I saw that you ended up in the hospital, too. I hope you're doing okay. I'm not, like, 100%. I'm not even close to 100%, to be honest, but I'm at the point where I can at least do a little something at the computer now. Doing a lot of physio. Trying to fix my body. Do you know about Mario Party Legacy custom boards? No, I do not know about that. Sounds cool, though. I don't remember that joke, but I do remember you screaming kill an old man at the top of your lungs after beating Sting in 2K16. Yeah, yeah, I probably did that. Better than before, so that's progress. I'm okay. Mental breakdown and whatnot. That sucks. Everyone should follow Hero, by the way easily one of my oldest YouTube friends. He's been around since, what, my second Let's Play? I was a teenager. I think he found me when I was like 17. I'm 30. I'm pretty sure he is legit one of my first like 15 subscribers. Yeah, you are a young boy, yeah. I, I was but a young boy making rice and carrying bags for the people in the dojo. Heroes Cool, I used to watch the wrestling podcast. I miss those days. I bet you, looking back on it, every single episode of that podcast fucking sucked and that we would do it way better now. Uh, but it was still good times. <laughs> Someone going through all of our randomizers and he comments use a netball in every video in different variations every time. Yeah, he does that on my channel too. I'm assuming it's the same person. Oh, absolutely. Fun but awful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how, by the way, but I'm still friends with Jay Hunter to this day. He's a really good dude. I'm surprised he didn't just find me annoying as fuck from that whole podcast. But no, like he he's always been really good to me. He's an awesome dude. His username's Congo Wongo. I think that's the one. I'll, I might have to double check that. 
Oh yeah, preposterous bear thief. There's a lot of good quotes from DBZ Team Training. That was a fun Let's Play. For any of you who only watch the Pokemon stuff, um, I have a playlist on the channel called DBZ Team Training, and it's a ROM hack of Pokemon Fire Red where it's like all Dragon Ball stuff, and it's really funny. Oh my god, it's really funny. And it's a legitimately really cool ROM hack as well. Like, the bad stuff is funny bad, and the good stuff is really fun and cool. Such a good mod. It's so dumb, but it's so glorious. So many good jokes came from that one. Of course, Trunks would say that DBZ team training is fantastic. <laughs> team training was a lot of fun. I remember we were just glowing after the first recording session of that game where like it was so much better than even we were expecting is that one of the ones where we went in blind where like i didn't tell you what we were about to sit down and record as i booted it up i just heard about it got it and i was like oh i need what a geek for this <laughs> hope it's not strange uh sounds strange to say but it's really nice hearing seeing you get uh, getting better fuck me i can't talk no not strange at all Bear Thief absolutely came. I love all the dialogue in early game where it's like, you can capture fighters in your capsule. You're just stealing humans. <laughs> they just like replace the word Pokemon with fighter and it leads to some dark shit. <laughs> Remember what a geek being fucking fucking baffled? I was baffled too. There was some crazy shit in that game. Oh my god, and then in one of the updates, they changed it so the battle theme is like a knockoff of a theme from Dragon Ball, but it sounded really shrill and bad. That was insane. Then there was that one episode where we could barely see the screen anymore and we were trying to play because I had flooded the screen with so much dumb bullshit. <laughs> I am a fighter friend. Oh, there's so many good quotes from that Let's Play. That was a good one. Uh, it was a song that happens when the Saiyans attack from early DBs. Yeah. You still regularly giggle and see the why not with a white background before your eyes when someone asks why not yeah i'm forever ruined by that whenever someone says why not uh i just think of that the new pokemon game runs like ass but i can't stop playing it yeah that's kind of what i keep hearing is that it runs like ass it's full of hilarious glitches but it seems like no one has stopped playing it is there any old game you have in mind for a playthrough with Wada and Brandon? I mean, I got like a million games I want to play with them. Like, we want to do Pokemon Stadium 2 at some point. That's an old game. I want to do a lot of Pokemon stuff with them. I want to do more Mario Party, get Joe in. Uh, I, want to, I want to do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I know because I saw team training before DBZ. So when I saw DBZ, I was like, that's the team training wild battle theme. That's great. <laughs> How much to donate and get more Mancy, Na Nancy Drew? I can't talk. You don't need to donate a cent and we will do more Nancy Drew because I so badly want to do more Nancy Drew. I already have jokes lined up for the next Nancy Drew game. Do Pokemon Stadium rental randomizer? I'm sure that's awful. I I Pokemon Stadium round one with rentals was mostly fun until I got to like Master Ball Cup, then it was brutal. But Pokemon Stadium 2, I remember being way harder. And I've heard it is borderline impossible with only rentals. When we do Pokemon Stadium 2, there I am I am gonna do rentals for a little bit, have fun with it, but there's gonna be no obligation. You know, we'll start hacking in Pokemon and just having fun with it as soon as we feel like it. The, the Let's Play is about fun, not a challenge. Hey. 
<laughs> Sonic Heroes on GameCube. The main thing I remember about Sonic Heroes is the theme. And the main thing I remember about Shadow the Hedgehog was when me and Brandon Let's Played it, and it was three episodes long, because the game is so short, and the third episode was just the multiplayer. If you guys want a really short Let's Play on the channel, Shadow the Hedgehog. I think Shadow the Hedgehog is like an hour long, the whole Let's Play. In fact, it's about the same length as Dick Marcinko's Rogue Warrior, which I think was th three episodes. We beat the whole game in one sitting, our first time sitting down to record it, like just instantly. First time I see you online, want to thank you for all the Guild 2 videos. Ah, that's awesome. They helped me immensely. I'm enjoying Guild 3 now. Yeah, okay. So Guild 3 sucked for fucking ages, and then they switched the dev team, and then the new dev team was just fixing all the mistakes from the previous dev team. I most recently played it like four months ago before I had the big medical episode in my collapse. And um, yeah, Guild 3's actually gotten okay. Um, I haven't gotten super far in it, so I'm not going to judge like, the longevity of the game or anything but yeah guild 3 is actually playable now holy shit how many years did that take am i right but fuck it finally i love guild 2 it's rough around the edges but guild 2 is a really fun game and a great concept so i'm happy that guild 3 is finally getting some proper development first time i see you online i i wonder if you even know about all the health stuff like do you just know me from guild stuff because no shame if you just know me from guild stuff. Like, whatever. I don't mind. I'm just happy that you liked the videos and that you like the guild. I'm just happy when someone can watch one of my tutorials and then they can go have fun playing the game. Because it's like, that's awesome. I got to make content that not only entertained somebody, but then it caused an infinite amount of entertainment past that because then they got to bring that out and play a game and they can enjoy that. And maybe they wouldn't have enjoyed it if they didn't see my video, you know? So that's awesome. My mind went to School Jaeger. Oh yeah, School Jaeger Revolt of the Westicans. That game was fucking awful. Uh, how's Victoria 3? I really like it. I've been playing tons of it. I was playing it a lot on my Steam Deck when I was still bedridden. And it runs pretty well on Steam Deck, actually. You might need to turn down the graphic settings a little bit. And you gotta keep it plugged in because it's a battery hog, that game. But it plays pretty well. Um, but, oh... Victoria 3 on PC. Now, you guys know I'm a big Victoria 2 fan, but I have a hard time convincing people to play Victoria 2 because it's legitimately very hard to learn how to play that game. Victoria 2 is from 2010. It was before Paradox was a big studio, and it was when their games were very not user-friendly. But Victoria 2 was my favorite Paradox game. Um, very, very good. Now that I have Victoria 3 and I've played it a shitload, I can say that Victoria 3, you don't need to have played Victoria 2. Victoria 3 is a very, very different game, but it's also really, really fun. I'm very happy with it. Was having a hard time with the game, did a search, found you. What's up with the health? Oh, um, I guess I'll give you like a super quick crash course on me. Um, hi, I'm Madrybred. I'm MDB. Uh, I collapsed three months ago at, in this very, not this very chair, I actually got a new chair. In this very room, I collapsed three months ago with some kind of health crisis, and I've been going through the horrible Canadian healthcare system trying to figure out what was wrong. I've seen a bunch of specialists, I've seen a bunch of doctors, I haven't been able to work in three months. This is my first time talking into a microphone since then. Um, I'm not, I'm not 100% better yet, but I'm well enough that I can at least sit in my chair and talk to you. I missed you guys. Um, uh, it, it looks like I have a herniated disc in my neck, maybe in my back, something like that, causing nerve issues. Um, I do take good care of my body. I do, uh, I, I do stretch a lot. I do, I, I lifted weights a lot. I did a lot of cardio. Cardiologist said my heart's healthy as fuck. Um, but uh, yeah, I've got Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, so sometimes something can slip out of place and it looks like something in my neck went wrong, you know? Um, how much harder is it than Crusader Kings? I find Victoria 3 probably easier to learn than Crusader Kings 3, but same game engine. Where in Canada? You're in Edby. Oh, I'm in Ontario. So you already know. <laughs> New Brunswick, I'm sure, has uh, a less burdened system 
than uh, than Ontario. Ontario is very overburdened. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm MDB. I did a video a day minimum on YouTube for 10 years. I edited every single one of them. I was the host of every one of them. I voiced over every one of them. Every script that I have ever read is one that I have wrote. I am a ridiculous one-man show. Not to say only one man has been on the show, or woo man. I have plenty of my friends who have been on the show. I just mean I run the whole thing. And this is what I've done since I was a 17-year-old. I'm 30 now. Uh, this is what I do. I've been streaming since before Twitch was a website. I've been Let's Playing since before you could get paid doing gaming stuff. And uh, on YouTube, I'm most famous for my Pokemon challenges, where I beat Pokemon games in ridiculous ways, as well as Bethesda games, but people know me more for the Pokemon ones. And m first and foremost, I am MDB world-famous Nancy Drew Let's Player. <laughs> Heard the hospitals are so packed over there. It's fucking bad, man. Every appointment I do takes, like, weeks just to get seen for anything. And all the cracks in the system that I've had to deal with have been fucking ridiculous. The Bethesda ones made you try out Oblivion? Yeah, that's awesome, because I love Elder Scrolls Oblivion. That's such a fun game. MDB did every voice on his show, including mine and Gooset. Yes. <laughs> it's not good at those other voices that two sound the same. <laughs> Are you not fa the famous Big League MDB? I have heard such accusations. I am indeed the famous Big League MDB. Ooh, the hospital closest to you is at 175% over capacity. That's fucking bad. When I went to the hospital, uh, I was there for seven and a half hours in the middle of the night before I got looked at. And uh, they did a lot of heart tests on me, actually, because they thought it was my heart. It didn't. It turned out not being my heart. Um, but they did a lot of tests on my heart. And at the end, they just told me I have a very healthy looking heart. Turns out that if you have a really healthy heart from doing a lot of cardio, then when you sleep, you'll have a kind of heart arrhythmia where sometimes it takes long beats, but they're not like dangerous. I learned this from the, the cardiologist, actually, that I talked to, um, what, like three weeks ago? Um... So I talked to the cardiologist and he he was pointing it out on the chart because I, I had to wear a heart monitor for a few days. So I had it on while I was sleeping, of course. And he said that my heart, despite being inactive for the last few months because of the health stuff, that uh, apparently my health was uh, or my heart health is very good, which is super nice. Just had a death in the waiting room that that happens disturbingly often over here. I hate it. The Bethesda challenges make me laugh so much. I can't wait for another Fallout New Vegas video. I do want to do another Fallout New Vegas one. I've got like ideas written down. Always good to know the heart is healthy. I know, right? Because like I was real worried before I knew if it was my heart or not, because all the doctors were really thinking it sounded like my heart at first, but they did lots of tests. That's the one thing I really commend them on is they gave me a lot of tests on my heart. I did ultrasounds. I did an I did an ECG well sideways on an exercise bike at a cardiology clinic. That was a crazy test. Um, I, I did the heart monitor. I did multiple ECGs. I did multiple ultrasounds. They really did a lot checking my heart. And uh, they said that that's good. No blood clots. My cholesterol's good. My heart looks healthy. I don't have any weird things going on with it. It's not misshapen. The valves look good. Everything with my heart is healthy. This really truly is a nerve issue caused by some kind of herniated disc in my neck. So I'm getting an MRI for it and I'm getting a nerve conduction test for it, but it's going to take a few months because that is how backed up it is here. Been following your YouTube since 2011. <laughs> with the recent stuff, I hope you're feeling better soon. I appreciate it. It is crazy that some of you have been watching me for 13 years. Oh, I say some of you. I think the only one here who's been watching for 13 years, or at least known me for 13 years, has got to be Hero. Because he was probably subscriber like 15.
Ontario, my local hospital. Oh, my local rural hospital takes six, seven hours to get seen usually. Yeah, that's about how bad it is here in, in uh, Oakville. Yeah, what a geek and fairy. I would have met both of you around the same time. So like 11 or 12. Yeah, some people, it's funny how often I'll get people who are like, oh my god, I didn't know, like, when I was a kid, I used to listen to your creepypasta readings, and I've watched you for years now and didn't realize that that was you. Yeah, I used to do creepypasta readings of mostly Pokemon creepypasta, and I regret almost all of those readings in terms of, like, I think I did a terrible job. I was way too hard on a lot of them, and I just didn't do a good job reading them, and my audio quality sucked, and really everything about them sucked. But I'm happy that so many people enjoyed them. So I don't regret that part. I do not regret that people enjoyed them, but I do regret, regret that I didn't do a better job on them. I know that if I did them now, I would do a much better job. Horror story reading MDB. What do you mean? Like, are you requesting? Or I'd listen to that. Oh. Oh, like reading horror stories. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'd ever go back to doing those things because um, reading things that I didn't write is not super compelling to me. Um, I much prefer... If I'm going to read a script... Because I'm I prefer doing... Uh, ad lib stuff and improv but if i'm gonna read a script i want it to be one that i wrote it's just i i first of all i stumble over my words constantly so i find it very hard to read out loud something that i didn't write um and i stumble over my words plenty even just reading what i did write but um i I, I don't know. I, I It's important to me that the words you hear out of me are tr well and truly my words, you know? It's, it's part of why, like, one of my hard rules with sponsorships on YouTube is it has to be my script. I have to be allowed to say what I want to say with my opinion, and I need to be able to word it the way that I word things, you know? It's, that's just really important to me. Just got back from marinating some chicken. I hope it's good. Two cloves is more than enough. Ne please don't ever use seven. Oh, like garlic? Oh my god, yeah, you don't need to use seven. Two is plenty. You can make some real good chicken marinade just with like olive oil, garlic, pepper. <laughs> you don't really need much. Are you going back to Seven Days to Die as soon as you get better? I don't know about as soon as, um, but I am going back to Seven Days to Die, and I don't want to wait super long on it, but I don't know when I'm going to be well enough to do Let's Plays. I'm playing Seven Days to Die, but IRL. That is true. <laughs> I'd love for you to go back to My Immortal and finishing it. Oh, yeah. You know why I did that My Immortal uh, reading in the first place was my computer died. That was like over a decade ago now. And so it was one of the few things I could do on my laptop. And that's why I made those videos. My laptop ended up dying like a month after my computer got repaired. Oh, the spice clove, not garlic clove. Okay. Have you considered playing Persona? Do you mean, like, on the show? No. I played a little bit of Persona 4 and never got to the gameplay, although I've seen the gameplay and it looks fun and I might be into it, but I don't think I'd play it on the show. I'm not sure. Yeah, in the time that I've done this stream, you could have watched that Shadow the Hedgehog Let's Play twice. <laughs> Midnight cooking. Oh, yeah, I guess you're like seven hours ahead of me because Finland. 
What a great let's play. That's his other name. Greetings from Brazil. Greetings to Brazil. I got so many viewers from Brazil. I mean, I guess it makes sense. Similar time zones. You know, that I, I was going to do a Victoria 2 Let's Play that I wanted to do like a beginning to end Victoria 2 Let's Play um, before Victoria 3 came out where I really comprehensively teach people how to play the game because I still really think Victoria 2 is a great game. And I was going to do it as Brazil because I because Brazil is such a fun country to play in so many video games, but that one especially. So it's a shame that, you know, I, I collapsed. I had the health issues because that's what stopped me from doing it. But... I've played as Brazil quite a bit on Victoria 3. I've, I actually have the achievement for um, for playing as them and overthrowing the monarchy uh, and getting universal suffrage. And uh, I, I am glad to announce Brazil is also very fun to play in Victoria 3. So there you go. And Brazil is fun to play in Civilization 6. I don't really remember how fun they are in Civ 5. I didn't play as them much in Civ 5. Their whole thing was like, oh no, I was going to say their thing was long golden ages, but no, I don't think it was. That was like Persia in Civ 5. I don't remember what Civ 5's bonuses for Brazil were, but in Civ 6, they're really fun. It's very uh, heavily amenity bonused. Bonused? Focused towards amenities, which is fun. Have you ever played Argentina? Yes, I, I had a fun time playing as Argentina in Victoria 2. I think they'd probably be fun to play in Victoria 3 because you would have a lot of fun um, colonizing stuff you could do in early game there. So you'd have a pretty good early game. You could compete with Chile a lot in early game. I would imagine they'd probably be your main competition for the colonizing. And they actually wouldn't be in that bad of a position to go out and um, colonize Africa either. Brazil's good at that too, actually. They're both in a decent position for it because they both have a lot of coastline, so you can have a lot of ports to get convoys. Have you played as Costa Rica? I haven't. They'd probably be pretty hard just because they're small and it is harder to play small nations in that game. But if you were able to get your quality of living up a lot really early, you could probably make it work pretty well. If you played as Costa Rica and you... Uh, joined a common market that's pretty big, you know, like probably like Britain's or France's. Um, you'd have access to a lot of pretty good cheap goods. You could build your industry based around that and you could really raise up in the world. It would be enough that you're surrounded by enough small weak countries that if you used a good common market like the British common market and you built up your industry and made some good money, you could probably afford a bigger army than anyone around you, start puppeting the nations around you, and then you could um, turn like all of Central America into uh, what is the Republic of Central America, as I think what it was called. You could make that into a country again, and you could actually be pretty powerful. From there, you could easily break into the Caribbean, South America, or even go up into Mexico. You could probably do some fun shit with that. I could see you even colonizing, uh, like, the Pacific Islands and getting some decent plantations out of that. I do want to get my quality of living up very high very early. That does sound fun. <laughs> Russia's your favorite to play in Civ 5. You like Maori in Civ 6. I think Russia's really fun to play in Civ 6. You found a religion. Uh, you get work ethic, which is your adjacency bonus for your Lavras also gives you uh, um, gives you production, and you take Sacred Paths or Dance of the Aurora, whatever one. If you're on Forests, Sacred Paths. If you're Dance of the Aurora, you go, um, or if you're in the Tundra, which you probably will be as Russia, then you go Dance of the Aurora. You can easily get like a 12 Faith adjacency bonus, which will also give you a 12 adjacency bonus for um, for uh production you mix that with the policy slot that doubles your adjacency bonus for um uh for faith and you will be a, pro a production juggernaut real real fun no oh, i just missed a call from fatima she probably doesn't know i'm still streaming this is random but in one of your videos you mentioned in a youtube documentary type series i remember one episode being dedicated to mjf and i just wanted to check in and love the god, I can't remember the name of the channel. Is there any way you can remember what it was? Wasn't it Kenny something? 
it was Kenny something, right? The one who did the the documentary thing with MJF, where it was like, like, uh, yeah, fucking, how do I describe it? You know the one, though, um, where it was like in character, basically, where it's like, it's supposed to be out of character, but like, he, he just, like, uh, things unraveled, you know? It's so hard to describe, you'd have to just see it. Mm, you know what? I can probably find it real quick right now. There we go. Kenny Johnson documentaries. I literally just searched MJF documentary on YouTube and got it. Ah, uh, fucking fucking fuck. Hold on, let me grab this link. And there you go. There's your link. All right. As much as I would love to stream for the rest of time, because it's real nice to be back to this again, um, I'm getting tired. I should go lay down for a little bit, maybe get some stretching on. I should do a little bit of my physio, get some food in me. And Fatima's calling, which probably means food. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do stuff. Um, this stream went okay. Maybe I'll stream again like this sometime soon. But if I'm feeling good enough to stream, I might also just work on a Pokemon challenge because I do really want to get back to that more. I'm like a little under halfway through a challenge right now and it's a really long script. It's gonna be a fun video. Like the battles are really interesting. I've had multiple regular trainers between routes that have brick walled us. <laughs> Turns out when you're a Chansey, Getting hit by Leech Seed, it's game fucking over. They heal so much when they Leech Seed you. It's crazy. And also, um, uh, what was it? Chansey has the lowest base attack in the franchise at five. Five base attack. That's half of a shuckle. Half of a shuckle. It's real bad. That Ghost Gym is legit one of the hardest battles I've ever done in a Pokemon challenge. But I did it. I had to grind so much, you won't even believe it. But you'll get to see that one day. Keep an eye on my Twitter. I keep you guys up to date on that stuff on Twitter. Uh, but thanks everybody for coming by. I really appreciate it, especially because I never promoted this on YouTube or anything. I just tweeted it out and put it on Discord. All of those links you can find in the description of all of my things. So, uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go relax for a little while. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.